Some of our new viewers might not be familiar with the Ball of Life mixtape legend Marcus Levette Jr. Levette was one of the most entertaining and viral players ever to grace the Ball of Life page. His videos did millions of views. His mixtapes were legendary. Marcus had some of the craziest handles we've seen still to this day. He was lightning quick and had an insanely quick pull-up jumper, but you may have never heard of him before. So let's get you caught up real quick. As you can see, he was special. So what happened to Marcus Levette Jr.? Marcus Levette was born in California on November 20th, 1994. He began his freshman year of basketball at Providence High School as a six foot point guard. Going into his freshman year, he was virtually unknown. No rankings, no interest, no buzz. But that would change quickly. Levette would have a phenomenal freshman season. In 27 games, he averaged 32 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and 3 steals. He wasn't just a scorer, he was a playmaker. He was the embodiment of a true point guard. He was able to break down the defense and find open teammates. He was all about winning. That same year, he was named State Player of the Year and even broke the school's single season scoring record. He scored 1,035 points that season. It's pretty hard to top a season like that. But his sophomore season, he would come back and average 34 points, four rebounds, and two assists. He was starting his sophomore season off right where he left off, but then he would transfer mid-season. He said he wanted to find a better academic program. That sounds like a pretty good kid to me. Sounds like he had a good head on his shoulders. Not many kids would make a move like that based off of academics. Not when they're having the success he was having on the court. Now his numbers did decline his junior year at San Gabriel High School. He would average 23 points, 4 rebounds, and 6 assists. Now if we're being honest, these numbers would be solid and elite in any state today. And he definitely led them to a state championship his junior season. Levette was on top of the world. Everywhere he went, good things happened. And by the end of his junior season, he was officially a four-star recruit. Now his senior season, he kind of shocked a lot of people. He moved from California and landed in Chicago. Morgan Park High School would be his new home. And everybody was wondering, would he continue to have the same success he had on the West Coast? Morgan Park had a better athletic program. It was gonna get him ready for the next level. He would team up with Kansas University's Charlie Moore, pretty much solidifying another state championship. This season, he'd average 24 points, seven rebounds, eight assists, and three steals. It was this season in which Levette would solidify himself as a serious high major prospect who not only could score the ball, but could get others involved and play defense. Now they would make it to the semifinal game in which they did lose. Marcus Levette would finish his high school career ranked 62nd, officially a four-star recruit. He averaged 32 points as a freshman with six 40-point outings, including a season-high 57 points. He was named All-Area Boys Basketball Player of the Year, CIF Southern Section Player of the Year, and was one of the most talked about and watched players in the country. And he did all of this at six foot. And both guys delivered, especially Marcus, in terms of what the fans liked. And the fans couldn't really keep their eyes off him when he played at Providence High School in Burbank. Lavette was turning out gyms all over the country with that shifty game. Guys couldn't stay in front of him. You know, he was made a highlight reel in the making almost every game whether it was for Providence or the Mac River Fire on the Nike EYBL. In his junior season, he transferred to San Gabriel Academy, and that didn't really change things. He was still balling. You know, after three seasons of high school, he was averaging 28.4 points per game, and he was considered one of the nation's best guards in the 2015 class. You know, for a senior season, the shifty Southpaw will return to his Midwest family roots. You know, his family's from the Midwest, and he played at Chicago's Morgan Park. There he led Morgan Park to the state semifinals. He actually put on a show trying to get them to the final in his last high school game. He scored 45 points in that semifinal loss. Finished fourth in the state in Mr. Basketball voting. He averaged 25 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. But it wasn't really so much the numbers with Marcus. It was just the way he made you feel when he watched them. Again, you couldn't keep your eyes off him. 
he was just a bad dude. Naturally, he had a lot of options when it came to picking a college. Memphis, Illinois, DePaul, Pittsburgh, Kansas, San Diego State, UNLV. Ultimately, he would decide to play basketball at St. John's University. It made a lot of sense. He would go in, be a star freshman, and get minutes right off the bat. But things got a little complicated when he got to St. John's. He arrived on campus 2015 and got straight to work. Practices, weight room, everything was looking great. Then the NCAA would announce that he would only be a partial qualifier, meaning he was able to practice, but might not be eligible to play this season. And if you know the NCAA, this of course wasn't a quick process. They would drag it out pretty much the entire season and he would never get to play a game. The school, athletic director, coaches, and everybody disagreed with the NCAA's ruling. This wasn't the start that Marcus was looking for, but he would keep his head up and of course return the next season. Let's go ahead and fast forward to the 2016-2017 season. He would be a freshman redshirt, starring in pretty much all of the games and average over 30 minutes per game. He would average 16 points, 3.8 assists, and one steal per game. Not bad, after missing competition for a whole season. And he was pretty efficient. He shot 46% from the field, as well as going 38% from the three-point line. Those are pretty good numbers. His biggest knock going into college was that he couldn't shoot the ball well. But shooting almost 40% from the three-point line pretty much cancels that debate. He would go on to make the All-Big East rookie team. He also had a season-high 32-point performance against Xavier. There was a lot of discussion after the season, whether to go pro or come back another year. Ultimately, after consulting with his family, coaches, and staff, he decided to come back another season. This, however, would turn out to be the wrong decision. Now, he started off the season, things were going great. Great stat lines, he was starting, getting a lot of minutes. But on November 26, 2017, he would suffer an MCL injury. At first, it was just a sprain. He was on a day-to-day -day evaluation. But later that season, in January, he officially announced that he would not be playing any more games. He would finish the season only playing seven games. However, his stats were pretty much identical to his first season. So it was pretty much an assumption that if he didn't get hurt, he probably would have got drafted the next season. Instead of returning back to St. John's for his third season, he announced that he would be pursuing a professional career overseas. He made the announcement in February. Fast forward, he went overseas and spent preseason with two different teams before landing with a team in Serbia. That team would go by Slobida and he would average 20 points, four assists, and three rebounds that first season. This would be the start of a successful overseas career. The following season, he would play in Turkey, then Portugal, Finland, and he's currently back in Portugal playing for a club known as Sporting CP. We're happy over here at Ball is Live to see that Marcus is having a successful overseas career. We wish him nothing but the best.